Now, let's talk about The Voice. I've got uh, Senator Jacinta Nabajimba-Price coming up in just a moment. But let me show you a little exchange that exposes central problems for both sides of this debate. Now, as I mentioned last week, lots of Liberals are supporting The Voice. Despite Peter Dutton and the federal opposition opposing The Voice, many Liberals will support it, some in the federal parliament, many members around the country, and, of course, most of the state Liberal MPs, including the Tasmanian Premier, Jeremy Rockliffe. Now, here's Barnaby Joyce this morning running his line about The Voice running amok. What Jeremy Rockcliffe should start off with answering is, what are you going to do when you have a selected body, Jeremy, that is there in perpetuity because it's there by reason of the Constitution, that has connections to the highest levels of government, such as interest rates with the Reserve Bank Premier, with the Reserve Bank Governor, excuse me, with the Chief of the Defence Force, with the head of the ABC and what they put on ABC to, every, to senior ministers, if they latently become part or partisan to, for instance, the Labor Party and the Greens, and you can't have an election to remove them, how are you going to deal with that forevermore? OK, so this is the big scare of the No campaign, and there are two important responses. First, the voice is only advisory. It has no power. Any government will be free to ignore anything it recommends. Second, the parliament will decide how the voice operates, how it's formed, what it should focus on, how its advice should be delivered, and so on. So, with that in mind, let's go back to breakfast television. The Parliament will set those rules. So we'll be debating that in the Parliament and voting on that Before in the Parliament. Before we go to the referendum? Well, no, because there's no point in having the legislation if the referendum's lost. We're, OK. Yeah. No, no, shows a, that's so sneaky, so sneaky. You're so negative, Barnaby. You just want to say no to everything. You're so to sneaky. To cheaper power. You're so everything. sneaky. Show us the ledge. Be honest. Be up front, straight, and throw us, show us the ledge you, before you've you throw had it ten, at us. You've had 10 years in government to do the details of this. Uh, you're the government. You're the government. You're competent of writing legislation. Show us the legislation before the Australian people vote. Otherwise, you're being sneaky and you've got something There's to cover up. There's plenty of detail out there, Barnaby. You are just wanting oh, to say that no. that is not the answer. That is not the answer, and you know it. So, this needs sorting out, doesn't it? They both make crucial points, and there's going to be a lot of debate around this in the weeks and months to come. Plibersek is right to say that the Parliament has the power to manage all of this, so if there are any problems, any government can change how the voice operates. That should comfort voters, of course. But as Barnaby says, the government should then show people what its voice would look like, either show people a draft bill or at least some key details. I reckon the government's frightened of putting out that much detail because opponents will dig into the detail and try and make mischief. And that's true, of course. The opponents of the voice are determined to create all kinds of scares around it. But they're doing that anyway, without any detail. So the government really ought to show a bit more faith in mainstream voters. It needs to take us into its trust and show us what sort of a voice it intends to legislate.